Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to present uh, a work on the uh, characterization, characterization of the error of various SSS products, SSS meaning sea surface salinity. This is a work done by Nina Wado that couldn't come here, and I'm presenting this work on, on behalf of her. She's working here in, uh, in the Institute of Marine Sciences next, next door, and, and this is one of the activities that we are doing on, uh, on during the, or, or work with the SMOS mission that is uh, measuring salinity from space. So the, the motivation of this work is with different satellite missions, we have already nine years of salinity data measured from space. <coughs> Previously, what we had is several, several sets of in situ data that have characteristics very different from what is the salinity rem uh, measured from, from space, and if we want to calibrate or measure the errors, we have to be sure that we take, um, we take care of the different statistical relationships between the errors of one scale and the errors of the other scale. So if we do direct, direct um, uh, differences between SMOS and, and Argo, or SMOS and Tau, we are usually assuming that Tau and SMOS are perfect measurements of the salinity at the surface. But what we know is that is not the case. So the direct comparison is usually not the best metric to validate how good or how are the errors of the satellite missions. So what we want to do here is to use uh, uh, another, another technique that it's called uh, triple collocation that is going to do two things at the same time. It's going to calibrate our data sets and it's going to give us a measure of the errors at, at, uh, of, these, of these products at different scales. The error that we want to measure or, or, um, or give a value is at the scale of the satellites because the satellites at this moment is the service that is providing us the largest amount of salinity information in the widest areas of the ocean in any in, in a weather condition. So to see how different is Tau or Argo from, from what we are measuring on, on the surface, you have to think that uh, the measure of satellites represent the first centimeter of the, of the column of the sea while the, the data that we are getting from in situ instruments is usually below five meters below the surface. And there are a lot of physical processes between these two depths. The other is when we have a, an image from satellite, we are talking an area that can be 25 kilometers by 25 kilometers, while the data of the, of the in situ measurements are point wise uh, in the space. The other is that in situ, in situ data is going to give us high frequency uh, data while the satellite is going to give us uh, low frequency. Talking about low frequency means weeks going to, mo to months scales. And so all this, all this makes that if we want to consider the, the difference between the both of them, we have to have account of those, of those differences. And triple collocation analysis uh, helps us to do this. What's the idea of triple collocation analysis? Triple means that we're going to have three data sets. Three data sets, independent, and uh, what we want to do is to calibrate. And to calibrate them, what we're going to use is one relationship like this. This is the true signal that we want to, to measure. And this uh, and the S sub E, R, or S sub I, are the different observations that we have given by three different uh, um, products. And what we want to do is to solve these calibration equations. For you to see the, the, the situation, imagine this. The situation in which we have three sources. One is very, very high uh, frequency, that it would be the, the blue. We are going to call it system one. Then we have something, something that is very coarse, really coarse, that could be a climatology, that is what it's the line is the red line that we are going to call system three, and that we had we can have something in between the high frequency and the climatology, and that's what we are going to call the system two, that it's the the uh, green line. If we do if do if we do calibrations, you we are going to remember that when considering the red line, when considering the coarse scales. We usually assume that anything that is smaller, smaller um, 
um, scales appear as a pure noise. And that's usually true. But if you look at the, at the green and the blue, you're going to see that these two signals share some information. So it's, there is a correlation or there is a covariance between these two of those signals. And what triple collocation does is he assumes that there is a covariance between two of these signals. So this covariance is between the, the two uh, highest resolutions, systems one and two, and what we're going to assume is that there is a covariance uh, between them. Of course, the covariances of the system three against the, 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 the high frequency and the system three against the, the meso, meso frequency are zero because they are supposed noise. What is not, what is not supposed zero is the covariance between the two finest resolutions. This, these values, these values, you can see that this R, the covariance between the blue and the green, is going to be largest as the green and the blue are closest to them. And it's going to be near to zero when the green goes to the red one. So if, if, the, if, the, if the system two is too smooth, this, this uh, representativity error, that is this R2, is going to go to zero. <laughs> So with this hypothesis, we solve the system of the calibration. And this system is, is a system that is, go, is going to give us the calibration coefficient and the, and the offset as a function of the covariance between those, uh, all these systems. But by assuming that one of these covariances was not zero, we see that this value of R2 appears in our equations. Appears in our equations, and one of the coefficient calibrations is explicitly a function of these covariances between the finest scales. So the question is, how do we know this value of R? I'm going to tell you the different, different approaches that have been used. I'm going to tell you in what, in what context we're going to use these, these, uh, these uh, studies of calibration. We're going to use different sources of C surface salinity. We're going to use tau data. We're going to use uh, a reanalysis done by, by Mercator, the glorious reanalysis. The advantage of this reanalysis is that it's, it's a simulating data, so we can suppose that the fields provided by, by this uh, reanalysis are close to the state of art reconstruction of the ocean. We are going to use two satellite products, Aquarius version 4 and uh, one of the versions of the, of the salinity fields provided by, the, by here at the back. It's the SMOS, SMOS OI. And we're going to use two different climatologies, the climatology of uh, the World Ocean Atlas uh, 2009 and the 2013. And we're going to have six products to do this uh, triple collocation analysis. We're going to base our analysis to, to, to the year 2013. Why year 2013? is a year that all of these data sets provide, uh, provide uh, data all of them. It's a neutral year, so it's not El Niño or La Niña, so the climatology could be reasonable approach to the state of the ocean during this year, and we're going to, um, to keep contained to this tropical, this tropical area. So how do we put a value to this R2, this is, um, to this representative error? So most of the time when this has been used in the past for winds, what we have done is to look at the, at the um, spectra, do the integration of the spectra, and according to the area of the integration between two different spectra, they can use uh, this as an estimation of R2. There are other methods based in the, in the, in the spectral, but when confronted with salinity data, the error, the error on the salinity measurements makes that the spectra by themselves are pretty much useless. Here you have the spectra of all these products and the, there are more dissimilarities than similarities being all of them measuring the same quantity at the same time. And you can see that none of those spectra are similar, the difference. So integration of differences between these spectra are not to be even going to give us information about this representative error. What we're going to use is the hypothesis that systems that are correctly calibrated should, uh, should have a, a perfect, a perfect um, 
uh, regression of one against the other. I'm going to show you with one example. Here you have the calibration. Here we have three data sets, tau, we have Gloris, the reanalysis, and we have SMOS. And on the left of the plot, you have the calibration. We, we, don't, uh, we apply the equation, uh, the calibration of those systems, assuming, but before <laughs> doing any, any uh, calibration between them. And you can see that the red line, the red line that is the slope of the calibration, is very far from, well, it's very far, it's far from what should be the ideal unity, uni, unity line. So you see that there is a need to calibrate these two sets. If we use the equations for calibration without representative error, you can see that there is some calibration between, the, between those, those, these two data sets, that is SMOS versus GLORIES. You can see that it's correctly calibrated, but you can see that it's not that well calibrated between SMOS and TAU. They are not simultaneously calibrated. When are these two simultaneously calibrated is when we assume an um, representative error of 0 0.023. It's the only moment that we can correctly calibrate these three data sets. So according to this is we're going to find these values of R2 by looking at this, at the slopes of these, of these um, um, regressions. And here you have, you don't have to do lots of lots of calibration with different values. You can see here uh, in, a, in, a, in every case um, six, six experiments and with these six experiments you can find that there is a value there is a value of the representative error that provides the correct, calib uh, the correct calibration. And this is how we have been calibrating these, these sets. So here you have, you have um, the representative error for these three <coughs> Uh, for this, uh, the, the calibration with the different data sets. And these data sets are always ordered in the same way. The first letter is the system one that's the highest resolution. The second letter is the medium resolution and the third letter represents the system three or the coarsest, uh, coarsest resolution. One of the interesting things about this method is if we switch two of them, the results are unrealistic. So, the system the equations by themselves identify and allow to work if you correctly order the resolution, the special, res the, the, the special resolution or time resolution between these systems. And analyzing the results, what you can find here is that uh, assuming this is, uh, this is a data set, the one with the highest spatial temporal resolution is tau, of course. Uh, then comes the reanalysis done by Copernicus, the, the glorious reanalysis. Then comes, then comes uh, Aquarius, uh, salinity retrievals, SMOS uh, retrievals, then comes the uh, climatology of the World Ocean Atlas 2013, and the cor coarsest resolution of all these methods is the, uh, is the Levit, uh, World Ocean Atlas 9. Those are, those are the representative errors. If we look at the error, at the, at the system 2, we're going to assume that SMOS and Aquarius are the system 2. These are where we want to assess what's the error. And what we can find is that the Aquarius scale tau has an error of 0 0.18. It's not a perfect measurement. It's not, uh, we cannot assume that tau at the scales of the satellites are perfect. We have to assume that they have an error. The error, uh, when we compare a tau, should be considered of the order of 0, 018 at the SMOS scale that is a little coarser than the effective scale of Aquarius should be considered of around 0, 0.22. So this is, is a method for calibrating multiple data. It's a method that allows to exploit the fact that two of these data sets do not need to be completely decorrelated, so they can have some covariance correlation between them and we can exploit this. We can even assess how much is this, is this uh, error associated to the covariance. And um, when, when we consider what's the error of the representativity error by, by respect the error of the, of the data, this representativity error can be at the scale of the satellites between the 15 and 50 percent of the value of the error. We, can, we have sorted these uh, data sets by resolution, as I told before. And what, well, as I said, 
when we look at in situ data at the scales of the satellites, we have to assume errors of the order of 0, uh, zero 02 or errors of 0 02. These errors of 0 02 come from those effects that I was telling at the, at the beginning. So the difference of the vertical, uh, uh, the, where the vertical measurement is, the difference between the horizontal space, and the difference between the time scales of the two measurements. We have, or we need, uh, to, uh, to uh, um, uh, well, to associate what, how much one of these uh, contributes to the total error. This is something that we are starting to do now. Thank you very much.